If you perform cell culture in your lab, splitting cells on a regular basis is critical to keeping your cells healthy and growing. I'm Nick, Research Associate from Cell Signaling Technology, and this is CST Tech Tips. In today's video, we'll explain why splitting cells is important, show you how splitting ratios work, and highlight three essential tips to help you successfully split your cells every time. We have two more step-by-step -step videos demonstrating how to split suspension cells and adherent cells respectively. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel and click the bell to get notified when new tech tip videos go live. And consider signing up for our email newsletter. We'll include a link in the description below this video. So, why is it important to split your cells? As cells proliferate, they deplete nutrients and produce metabolic waste, including lactate. This reduces the pH of the media and leads to stressed, unhealthy, and eventually dying cells. Common cell culture media used for mammalian cell lines such as DMEM are formulated with bicarbonate to buffer the pH in a CO2 incubator and phenol red as a pH indicator. So if you notice the media changing from red to orange or yellow, you should add or exchange fresh culture media, and it may also be time to split your cells. Splitting cells is also known as subculturing or passaging. Regularly splitting cells will help to keep your cells healthy and in turn can give your experiments the best chance of succeeding. Our first essential tip is a basic reminder to always use sterile technique to avoid contamination when splitting or feeding your cells. You can watch our tech tips video on sterile technique by clicking the pop-up link in the corner. In addition to the do's and don'ts covered in that video, let's also take a second to highlight the importance of pipetting carefully. If you draw too much liquid or air bubbles into the pipette, liquid droplets could contact the filter or enter the pipette aid and create the possibility of contamination. So keep an eye on your pipette and take your time. Okay, now let's return to the importance of splitting cells. Another reason to regularly split cell lines is to avoid physical overcrowding. Proliferating adherent cells will eventually run out of space in the vessel, becoming a confluent layer. The increased cell-to-cell -cell contact between confluent cells can change the activity of signaling pathways, such as MAP kinase, alter transcription patterns, and lead to reduced proliferation, a response known as contact inhibition. There are some experimental models where you would want a confluent monolayer, but if you are maintaining and expanding a cell line, most of the time you'll be splitting at subconfluency. In both suspension and adherent cell culture, the goal is to maintain log phase growth by splitting cells before they deplete nutrients, get stressed, or become contact inhibited. This brings us to essential tip number two. Be proactive when it comes to the health of your cell lines. Visually inspect your cultures on a regular basis using a microscope with a phase objective. With experience, you'll learn to distinguish healthy versus stressed cells for different cell lines. How often your cells need to be split can vary depending on the cell line and growth conditions. Most mammalian cell lines will grow optimally at 37 degrees Celsius. If the incubator is below the optimal temperature, the cells will grow slower. Above 37, the heat shock response can be turned on and cells will be stressed. When receiving a new stock of cells in the lab, take note of any recommendations from the supplier on how often to split the cells and at what ratio. These ratios typically can range from 1 to 3 to 1 to 6. For example, let's say the volume of cell suspension is 15 mils and you want to set up a 1 to 3 split. You would transfer 5 mils of cell suspension to each of three vessels and then add 10 mils of media to each to bring the volume back to 15 mils. To split 1 to 6, you would instead transfer 2.5 mils of suspension to each of six vessels and add 12.5 mils of media to each vessel to bring the volume to 15 mils. Note that you may not need to propagate all cells every time you split. Researchers will typically split some cells for use in their experiments, use some to seed plates or flasks for propagation, and dispose the excess cells. Check with your local lab safety office for guidance on disposal of biological materials. So as we've seen, using ratios is a straightforward approach. However, another method is to use cell density. Some suppliers will provide a range of recommended densities at which to split old plates and to seed new ones rather than ratios. To count cells and calculate density, you can use an automated cell counter or a hemocytometer, which is a slide chamber that is viewed on a microscope to allow manual cell counting in a defined volume. If you are concerned about the health of your cells, you can use tripan blue exclusion to distinguish live and dead cells and calculate the percent viability. This information can be recorded in a cell culture log or as part of your lab notebook. You can check out a blog post that walks you through counting cells and using either an automated counter or a hemocytometer. We'll drop a link in the description below this video. Now is a good time to get into our third essential tip. 
In the absence of shaking, cells and media will start to settle to the bottom due to gravity, even in a short time. Before transferring cells from one vessel to another, pipette the suspension up and down a few times to ensure the cells are thoroughly resuspended, and each plate receives a consistent number of cells. This practice will also help the accuracy of your cell counts. Circling back to our first tip, pipette carefully and deliberately at all times, but particularly when resuspending suspensions, since this step is most prone to accidental contamination. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, share it with your lab mates and make sure you subscribe to our channel. Click the bell icon to get notified when our next cell culture tech tips video is live. If you have any questions about a CST anybody, get in touch with the scientist at cellsignal.com/support. We'll see you next time and good luck with your experiments.